Guess what, I'm back again, third week in a row. Sorry. What can I say? I just, I just had to see the play. Yeah. Of course I also <coughs> had to get your association again. But I think mainly I had to see the play. Lord, no singer day. You know about that. You didn't know. They're going to do the play. Yes. Just, in, I don't know, half an hour or so, they'll do the play. That'd be fun. Krishna, 
His divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Sada Srila Prabhupada King, Iskan Swamra Chari Srila Prabhupada King, Gurundaraj Srila Bhagavad Gita King, Sri Sri Radha Radhanath King, Sri Sri Nitai Gorahari King, Sankirtan Yagya King, Gopremanande, all glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to Sri Guru and Sri Gauranga. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. <coughs> Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya 
Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Well, it's very nice to be with you again, unexpectedly. I was meant to leave today, but the temple president in Cape Town got a special offer on the ticket for tomorrow, <laughs> saving some hundreds of rands or something. So therefore he said, I will come tomorrow. Okay, that's all right. Anyway, gave me a chance to see you all again. Gave me a chance to see the play. Yes. So we may have a slightly shorter class today. Let us see how it goes. Uh, in about half an hour or so, we'll have the play, which is the appearance of Lord Nursinga Day. Sri Vishigare Bhagavan Keja Presented by I don't know what their name is Maybe it's the Bhaktivedanta players or something like that <laughs> Maybe they don't even know it but Anyway It's Krishna Chandra Prabhu And a cast of thousands Great actors and actresses so that'll be in about half an hour. There's another auspicious thing happening today. You know what that is? Hmm? Yeah. I don't know if I lip read you correctly there, but... Today is the appearance day of Srila Indra Dhyumana Swami Maharaj. So that's nice. I don't know if you had any program here this morning, but in Radharanath Temple, we had a very nice program. Very, very nice program. In the morning, instead of the Bhagavatam class. So we read some offerings and so on through till about 10 o'clock. It was a very nice program glorifying uh, His Holiness Indra Jumna Swami Maharaj who is dear, very dear to all the devotees. Among many, many other things, he has established the Rathayatra festival down there on the beachfront, of course. We all know about that. Such a nice festival. If it wasn't for him, well, there would be no Rathiatra festival. I don't know what you would all be doing at Easter. Hopefully not going to the Umgani Road Temple and other places <laughs> like that. But, yes, such a nice festival. Such a nice festival. Uh, such wonderful way for the devotees to get together and serve together at the lotus feet of Lord Jagannath and Srila Prabhupada and such a nice way to present Krishna consciousness uh, different aspects of Krishna consciousness to the people in general and of course it is the inspiration and has given, I think, the motivation for the Phoenix Rathiatra. Jai! Phoenix Rathiatra Ki Jai! So, that's coming up. 
in four weeks, I think it is, from now, 15th, 16th, and 17th. So that's going to be very exciting. And this year, I believe, we are going to have the big Rathiatrika. <laughs> Along with the big Jagannath deities. So that'll be really, oh, very exciting. Yes, so, Indra Jumana Maharaj, if it wasn't for him, these Rathiatras would not happen, I don't think. Well, I'm sure, I'm pretty sure they wouldn't happen. Uh, he, he was the one who organized it. First year was, I think, a one-day festival. And if any of you remember, was it a one was it two days? I thought it was one day. Anyway, maybe it was two days. But then it extended out four or five days, some years. Nowadays it's uh, uh, four days. And what a wonderful festival. So this is all the mercy of His Divine Grace, Indra Jumna Swami Maharaj. I know we had a few Rathiyatras before that, I remember taking part in one Rathiyatra in Chatsworth. It went, I think it went from our, where our present temple is now, although it wasn't there then. It went along 301, if you remember the road system there, along the top there, and then down maybe to the Unit 2 grounds, or Unit 3 grounds, Unit 2 grounds. Yes, and we had three chariots, but they weren't well made. So only one of them made it to the end of the procession. <laughs> I had to come along a little later. Somehow I got caught up. So I was following along, and as I went along, there was one Rathiatrika. <laughs> Further on, there was another one with a wheel fallen off. <sighs> but I remember we had Rathiatra in Tonga. I don't know if any of you were around for that. And it rained. Oh. Rained very nicely. No water shortages. Fortunately, I had an umbrella. And I was compassionately looking out at the other devotees who didn't have umbrellas, but I wasn't feeling compassionate enough to give them my umbrella. <laughs> You know, something like that. So we did some uh, Rathiatras before Intrajumana Maharaj really established the program that we have now, but that was right back in the early 80s. Uh, so they were nice, but they weren't the same at all as these big, grand Rathiatras that we have that we've been having for the last 13 years. And here, this will be our second annual Phoenix Rathiatra. Mm, very nice. So it's all by the mercy of Srila Indra Jumana Swami Maharaj, such a nice devotee, such, such a gentleman, and such a, a well-meaning devotee, such a person completely without offenses or any type of inimical feelings to any other devotees or anyone. Such, such a wonderful example of what it is to be a devotee and how one should be if one is a devotee or one is trying to be a devotee and I appreciate his uh, association so much it's really very very nice so you can uh, offer some prayer to Maharaj today for his mercy because on the appearance days of the great devotees, they are more accessible and more merciful 
So even though I don't, I don't think we have a picture of him here, but at least within your minds you can picture him and offer some prayer to him for his mercy and that you, you can follow in his footsteps and preach like him, at least a little bit like him. That would be a great service. And you can become a devotee at least a little bit like him. Oh, that would be so nice. That would be so wonderful. Yes, so now we'll read from Bhagavad Gita as it is. Translation and commentary by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, founder Acharya of our International Society for Krishna Consciousness. And uh, today we're going to read from the seventh chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Knowledge of the Absolute. And we are going to read verse 25. So Lord Krishna says, Naham Prakasha Sarvasya Yoga Maya Samavrita Mudoyam Abhijana T Lokomam Ajam Avyayam. I am never manifest to the foolish and unintelligent, for them I am covered by my internal potency, and therefore they do not know that I am unborn and infallible. Let us, let us uh, repeat this responsibly. You can repeat after me. I am never manifest to the foolish and unintelligent. For them I am covered by my internal potency. And therefore they do not know that I am unborn and infallible. And infallible. Yes. This is very nice verse. So we'll read the purport by Srila Prabhupada. It may be argued that since Krishna was present on this earth and was visible to everyone, then why isn't he manifest to everyone now? But actually, he was not manifest to everyone back at that time. He was not manifest to everyone 5,000 years ago. When Krishna was present, there were only a few people who could understand him to be the Supreme Personality of Godhead in the assembly of Kurus. When Shishupal spoke against Krishna's being elected president of the assembly, Bhishma supported him and pro proclaimed him to be the supreme god. Similarly, the Pandavas and a few others knew that he was the supreme, but not everyone. He was not revealed to the non-devotees and the common man. Therefore, in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says that but for his pure devotees, all men consider him to be like themselves. He was manifest only to his devotees as the reservoir of all pleasure. But to others, to unintelligent non-devotees, he was covered 
by his internal potency. In the prayers of Kunti in the Srimad Bhagavatam 1819, it is said that the Lord is covered by the curtain of Yoga Maya, and thus ordinary people cannot understand him. This Yoga Maya curtain is also confirmed in the Ishapanishad, Mantra 15, in which the devotee prays, Haranmayena Patrena Satyasya Pihitam Mukam Tattvam Pushana Pavrinu Satya Dharamaya Drishtaye O oh my Lord, you are the maintainer of the entire universe and devotional service to you is the highest religious principle. Therefore, I pray that you will also maintain me. Your transcendental form is covered by the Yoga Maya. The Brahma Jyoti is the covering of the internal potency. May you kindly remove this glowing effulgence that impedes my seeing your Satchit Ananda Vigraha, your eternal form of bliss and knowledge. The Supreme Personality of Godhead in his transcendental form of bliss and knowledge is covered by the internal potency of the Brahma Jyoti and the less intelligent impersonalists cannot see the Supreme on this account. Also in the Srimad Bhagavatam 10, 14, 7 there is this prayer by Brahma O Supreme Personality of Godhead, O Super Soul, O Master of all mystery, who can calculate your potency and pastimes in this world? You are always expanding your internal potency and therefore no one can understand you. Learned scientists and learned scholars can examine the atomic constitution of the material world or even the planets, but still they are unable to calculate your energy and potency, although you are present before them. <clears throat> the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Krishna, is not only unborn, but also avyaya, inexhaustible. His eternal form is bliss, and knowledge and his energies are all inexhaustible. Naham Prakasha Sarvasya Yoga Maya Samavata Mudho Yam Nabijana Ti Loko Nam Ajam Avya Yam I am never manifest to the foolish and unintelligent for them I am covered by my internal potency and therefore they do not know that I am unborn and infallible. Om Gyanu Tamarandu Siyakya Nanjana Shalakaya Chakshu Militam Yena Tazmai Shri Gura Vena Maha Shri Chitanya Mano Vishtam Stati Tam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadama Abdadati Swapadandikam Vajka Patrubhya Strakruta Sindhuvya Vacha Paditanam Pavanibhya Vaishnavibhya Namo Nama Sri Krishna Chaitanya Pavanacha Nandashi Advaita Gadadha Shivasni Gora Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Yes, so here, this is verse 25 of the seventh chapter, and in the two verses immediately prior to this verse, in other words, verses 23 and 24, Lord Krishna has spoken about two of the main types of non-devotees non-devotees 
and those two types are who won the demigod worshippers and two the impersonalists demigod worshippers I think you all know what that means Durga Saraswati Hanuma Kali Shiva Ganesh Thirty-three million actually and amongst them there's Krishna and Vishnu yes they are amongst the many gods they're very nice and they are amongst the many gods and it's just up to you to choose who you like yes <coughs> you can choose in fact in the same chapter verse 20 Krishna says Kamaistai stai ritakyana prapajantanya devata tantam niyamam astaya prakritya niyata swaya those whose intelligence has been stolen by material desires they surrender unto demigods and follow the particular rules and regulations of worship which suit them in terms of their particular desires in other words if they desire some particular certain thing like money then they worship Lakshmi and they follow the particular method of worship for her which is different from if for argument's sake you are going to worship Lord Shiva for some material benediction or Lord Indra if you're a farmer like Krishna's relatives the inhabitants of Vrindavan every year they would perform the Indra Puja so that there is a certain procedure you do certain things it is not that you worship all the gods in the same ways no 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 Indra you worship in one way and Lakshmi you worship in a different way so therefore Krishna says in that verse chapter 7 verse 20 that these people they choose a particular form of worship in terms of their particular desires in other words which particular demigod they are approaching that particular form of worship they choose and often often the demigods they give the results that the worshipper is asking for quite easily now don't think that if you call up the local uh, priest the local Swami unit 20 Swami and you have one prayer you know some one way or another some way some prayer don't think that this is going to actually achieve that to worship those demigods is not easy big big sacrifices involved extremely opulent you have to know all the Sanskrit mantras the priest has to can't use Hindi no Hindi particularly no South African kitchen Hindi for reciting the mantras can won't work demigods don't speak kitchen Hindi South African style no Hindi 
only pure Sanskrit and those mantras have to be chanted without any error no mistake in the pronunciation to give you an example you may know this how in the sixth canto of the Bhagavatam some people performed a sacrifice in order to get the benediction of producing a person from the sacrifice who would kill Indra so they recited the mantras but they made one mistake they got one syllable wrong syllable so they were meant to chant Indra Shatraho that last syllable is sort of doubled Shatraho yes uh, and that means Indra, Shatra Ho means the enemy of Indra in other words he can kill Indra that was the idea but they mispronounced it they said Indra Shatra instead of Shatra Ho so it changed the meaning instead of the enemy of Indra it now means he who Indra is the enemy of in other words he who Indra can kill one syllable mispronounced yes uh, so anyway these demigods though if the worship is done nicely then they can be very easily satisfied sometimes if it's done very nicely why is that? why are they so easily satisfied? well you may have heard I will give you the example of Lord Shiva he's very popular he's very popular here in South Africa <coughs> Lord Shiva, his name, one name is Ashutosh. Ashutosh. Ashu or Asha means desire. Tosh means to satisfy. So Ashutosh, Ashutosh means he very easily satisfies your desire you pray to him give me give me new car you do it nicely you get new car relatively easily this is the idea at least so why is he called Ashutosh or why is he so easily satisfied Srila Prabhupada explained that Lord Shiva when you see pictures of him many times you see him sitting just like this under one banyan tree he has his mala his rudraksha mala special beads he uses so you see him there his eyes are closed he's sitting cross-legged he is in meditation holding his beads or maybe just sitting there in meditation oftentimes you see pictures of Lord Shiva like that so who is he meditating on? he is meditating on the Supreme Lord Sankasha particularly who is a form of Krishna so in other words he is a great devotee so he enjoys and he just relishes just meditating on Krishna in one form or another and he becomes so absorbed he closes his eyes and he just 
goes deep into that meditation. This is Lord Shiva. And then along comes Mrs. Naidu from Unit 13, knocking on the door. Lord Shiva, Lord Shiva, may I have a new TV, please? Color, color. What's a good TV? Tele Funkin, is that good? Anyway, some special, must be, 50 inch screen. And, uh, you know, remote control, everything. So there's Lord Shiva in meditation. And here comes Mrs. Naidu. Oh, Lord Shiva, Lord Shiva. And he's absorbed in his meditation on the Lord. So he turns around, there's Mrs. Naidu from Unit 13. And he thinks, oh my gosh, it's her again. So then he says, all right, look, just take it. Just take it. Take a 60-inch screen. Just take it and go. And just go. So off she goes thinking, ah, oh, very good, Lord Shiva. And he thinks, good riddance, and just goes back to his meditation, deep meditation on, on the Lord. Yes, so in many cases with the demigods it's like that. It is not that they enjoy being worshipped Yes, here I am, big demigod, they're all worshipping me, very nice. Not really. Genuinely they are devotees. And they would rather remember the Lord and focus on the Lord and discuss about the Lord. But then all these people are running up and asking, Oh, can I have some money? Can I have better health? Can you cure my headache and all? So, I don't know if I mentioned last week. If people ask me, sometimes people and I come and ask me. They say, Swami, I got headache and all. <laughs> Get me? So I say, look, listen, folks. My recommendation is too disparate. <laughs> too disparate. I've gone beyond the stage of saying, just chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> of course, that's always good. But now I just tell them, look, you know, just take, just take too disparate. All right. That's what I do. Yeah. So anyway, generally these demigods, they're devotees. And they don't want to be distracted by all these little people with their petty little desires. So therefore, <coughs> in verse 23, Lord Krishna refers to the demigod worshippers as Alpa made son. Alpa made a son. You know there's one verse in the Bhagavatam. Krishna Vain Tusha Krishnam Sango Pangastra Parishadam Yajyai Sankirtana Prayer Yajanti Hi Su made a son. That means that in this age, Kali, Kali Yuga, the Lord will appear and establish the Sankirtan Yajna as the process for this Kali Yuga and people who are Su Medhasa, they will follow him and take part in that Sankirtan Yajna. So Su Medhasa, Medhasa means intelligence. Su means 
very good. Just like we have, who do we have? Subhadra. Subhadra. I think you've all heard of her. She'll be here for the Ratha Yatra. So, Bhadra, Bhadra means auspicious. But Subhadra means very auspicious, wonderfully auspicious. That is what she is like. So, therefore, that verse is saying that people who are Subhadrasa, they have very good intelligence. Not just good, but they're especially intelligent. They will also take part in that Sankirtan Yajna and will worship the Lord in that way. Now here, it, is, it says, Alpa, Alpa made her son. What does Alpa mean? It means very small. You don't have the word in Hindi so much now, but in Bengali they still use it. When when you're serving prasadam to Bengalis, and they don't want so much, they just want a little, they say, alpo, alpo, alpo. Just a little, just a little. So the demigod worshippers, in verse 23, are called Alpamedasa, small intelligence. Unto that tupalantesham, tabbavat yalpa medasam. Men of small intelligence worship the demigods, and their fruits are limited and temporary. Then in verse 24, the verse immediately prior to the verse that we're reading today, Krishna describes the impersonalists, those who think that God is not a person, he is just a light or an energy, or maybe we are all God. Everybody is God, everything is God, something like that. In other, word, in other words, it is an impersonal idea. You know, I often think, that we are really lucky that we are not God. You know, it, it's taken so much to get this temple to this point. My gosh. It has taken so much. Just imagine if we had the whole rest of the universe to deal with too. Forget it. <laughs> Just don't even bother. So you're really lucky that you're not God, okay? Just be his servant. So, uh, Krishna here describes the demigod worshippers avyaktam vyaktam apanam manyante mam abudaya buddhi means also intelligence medasa means intelligence buddhi is another word in Sanskrit which also means intelligence. So the demigod were the, the demigod worshippers. They were called Alpamedasa, small intelligence. The impersonalists. Krishna calls them Abhudaya. They have no intelligence. They're even worse. How's that? No brain. No brain. Yes. Thinking we're all God. We're all God, but we forgot. So if you walk out on the street and ask someone, Are you God? Then generally, most people will say, No. Some people, I suppose, they're a little sort of... Otherwise, they might say yes. <coughs> but... The idea, the impersonalists, often they say like this, that we are all God. Rube, you are God. Didn't you know that? You didn't know that? Ah. You are God, actually. You are, and we all are. 
the creators of the whole universe. We are currently, right now, at 5.45, today on Sunday, we are sustaining the whole universe, although we're not aware of that, but we are doing it. So we are all God, but we forgot. Now we're in illusion, and th we think we are not God. We think we are Mr. Such and Such from Phoenix. And that's who we are, and that we have to go to work in the factory tomorrow. That's who we think we are. So that means that now illusion has control of us. That means that the illusion is greater than God. That, that can't be right. Therefore, Krishna says, they are abhudaya. They have no brain, no intelligence. So these two categories of people, can someone just check if they're ready? These two categories of people Krishna says here in verse 25, which we are discussing, he says, I am never manifest to the foolish, the demigod worshippers, their small intelligence, so they're foolish, and the unintelligent, the impersonalists who have no intelligence. For them I'm covered by my internal potency and therefore they do not understand me. Even if Krishna walks up to them face to face and says, here I am, I am God, right in front of you, here I am. But they'll say, no, 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 no. They cannot understand. They cannot understand. You know, there's one nice verse uh, by Yamunacharya, one of our great Acharyas, actually in the Sri Vaishnav line. He says that, my Lord, you are never recognized by these people, the non-devotees in general. Demigod worshippers, impersonalists, they're just different varieties of non-devotees. So he says, you're never recognized by the non-devotees, even if you make it obvious. You just show them clearly that you're God, but they'll never recognize. But your pure devotees, even if you try to hide the fact that you are God, but they recognize you, Yes, there's some very nice stories in that regard. Uh, when Krishna, one time, okay, a couple of minutes, one time Krishna went to Hastinapur to try to negotiate to avoid the battle. So Duryodhana was not impressed. He said, ah, oh, this Krishna, he keeps coming and talking to us telling us we must do this, we must do that, we must give the Pandavas something, but we don't want to. So he told his soldiers, just arrest Krishna, just arrest him, we're not interested in Krishna, we'll lock him up. So the soldiers went to arrest Krishna. Krishna manifested his universal form something similar to what he showed Arjuna in the 11th chapter of Bhagavad Gita. So when the soldiers saw that, oh, well you know what happened to Arjuna? It's just completely overwhelming. They were just devastated. They just ran. And they came back to Duryodhana and said, watch out. Don't play around with Krishna. He is God. Look, look at him. So he was displaying quite obviously that fact. But Duryodhana, who was a staunch non-devotee, 
just stalwart non-devotee. He looked, he saw the universal form, and all his soldiers were saying, look out, you know, there, he's God, he's Vishnu. Leave him. And Jyotam said, no, he's not Vishnu, he's not God. And he told them, I know what it is. In his last life, Krishna, his previous life, he performed great austerities. So now he has some mystical powers. And he can do this. That's all. He's not God. So, for the staunch non-devotees, even if he shows them just so obviously straight in their face, they can't get the idea. But he cannot hide himself from his devotees. And in that regard, there's also a very nice story of Sanatan Goswami one time with Lord Chaitanya. It's described in the Madhya Leela, Chaitanya Charitamrita, how Sanatan Goswami was asking Lord Chaitanya about all the different types of avatars. And he knew that Lord Chaitanya is the Yuga avatar for this Kali Yuga. But Lord Chaitanya, he would not admit that. If anyone ever said to him, Oh, you are God, he would cover his ears and run away. And just tell the person, you know, you're just speaking nonsense. Something like that. So Sanatana Goswami wanted to conduct the conversation in a tricky way so that he would get Lord Chaitanya to admit all right I'm the Yuga avatar so they were talking about the different avatars and uh, Sanat Goswami said well what about the Yuga avatars Lord Chaitanya said oh yes very good Sanat Goswami said, what about the Satya Yuga avatar? Lord Chaitanya said yes and described the Satya Yuga avatar. Then Sanat Goswami said, what about the Traitor Yuga avatar? And Lord Chaitanya said, oh yes, very good, and talked about that avatar. And then Sanat Goswami said, what about the Dwapala Yuga avatar? And Lord Chaitanya said, oh yes, wonderful, that was Krishna. Very nice, and he talked about him. And then Sanat Goswami said, But I also heard that there is an avatar in Kali Yuga. And Lord Chaitanya said, Yes, of course. And Sanat Goswami said, I have heard that he starts the Sankirtan movement. And Lord Chaitanya said, Yes, that's right. And Sanatana Goswami said, And I have heard that he appears in a golden color. And Lord Chaitanya said, Just stop your intelligent questions, Sanatana. <laughs> and let me tell you about the Shaktyavesh avatars, a different type of avatar. In other words, he used a famous technique in the science of argument that if you are losing in an argument, change the subject. <laughs> so he changed the subject. Yes, he told him, you stop your clever questions. And I'll tell you, about the Shakti of Asia of the Okay. But the foolish and unintelligent, no, they can't understand. But the devotees, they understand. Even if Krishna is hiding himself. All right. Now, am I meant to answer some questions? I'll just quickly try and answer a couple of questions because we don't want to go too late. And we still have to have the drama. What is the significance of wearing tulsi beads? They are so pure that 
when you die, if you are wearing them, then the agents of the Lord of Death, Yamaraj, they're called the Yamadutas, they come to take sinful people for judgment when they die. But if you're wearing those Tulsi beads, they're so pure that those Yamadutas, they cannot take you. They will not take you. Even if you ask them to take you, <laughs> they will not take you. They will offer their respects and go. Yes. So like this. And of course, in the meantime, because they're so pure,